Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today our topic is what do I need to know about male hormones? Many people talk about female hormones, including me, but I think it's time to talk about male hormones. Guys should not be forgotten, and it's useful to understand that male hormones are pretty much easier to understand than female hormones. And I think that it's important to know that male hormones are based on cholesterol metabolism. We metabolize cholesterol and we metabolize pregnenolone, which is the master hormone, that becomes all of the different hormones that we use in our body, that, not every hormone, but these particular ones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, aldosterone, which helps us with water balance, cortisol, which is a stress hormone from the adrenal glands, and some of the androgens that are like testosterone, like 5-dihydrotestosterone, and androstenedione. We also have DHEA, which is very important. It's a sex hormone, but it's also a precursor to the stress hormones. Another factor that we need to know about with this cholesterol pathway is a protein in the blood called sex hormone binding globulin. And sex hormone binding globulin is a protein that binds to our sex hormones and carries them around and drops them off and delivers them at different places. The interesting thing about sex hormone binding globulin is it'll tell you that there's a problem either of your sex hormone system or your adrenal hormone system because the adrenal stress hormone system of cortisol works very closely with the sex hormone system in both males and females. And if you have a problem with either of them, you might start to see if it's chronic problems with DHEA and problems with sex hormone binding globulin. So looking at blood tests is a very useful thing to know about that. The general concept with regard to men is that men need cholesterol in their diet and they need to eat saturated fats and they need to have healthy fats in their diet to be able to drive this pathway. If a man eats too many carbs compared to fats, there's going to be several kinds of problems. He may not make enough testosterone or he may have the testosterone that he makes undergo something called aromatization. And aromatization is driven by carbohydrates and insulin resistance. It's a process by which a man's testosterone is changed into estrogen. And so that creates that situation where men get man boobs and they get a gut and they get abdominal obesity and fat and they get different kinds of problems where they become feminized. This happens partly from the pesticide atrazine and it happens in other types of plastics. Nearly every fat soluble petroleum product in our world today, volatile organic compounds, all kinds of stuff that's xenoestrogen, which means an alien estrogen, a synthetic estrogen, can mess up male hormones just like it can mess up female hormones. You'll see that there may be guys that have problems with anything from being feminized to not making enough uh, androgens and, and not making enough testosterone. Sometimes they may have high estrogen and they may become very weepy and, and they may say they cry at commercials where they didn't used to. They may feel very weak and affected by everything. They may feel a lack of drive and a lack of ability to complete things. They may feel altered sex drive. They may feel all kinds of different things. And one of the ways that we deal with that is we take anti-inflammatory and anti-estrogen drugs. These are things that help break down estrogen and help break down these inflammatory chemicals in men. And that's things like turmeric and things like boswellia. These are herbs that can do that. There are some herbs that will also control cortisol, like rhodiola rosea. And we can also consider things like uh, magnesium and things like taking saturated fats and omega-3 fats, especially. If a man has problems with his omega-3 versus 6 ratio, he's eating too many seed oils. For example, I just saw a report today that in England, by far the largest cooking oil is either sunflower or safflower oil. That's a huge huge omega-6 type of fat, and that will destroy the metabolism of men and their testosterone. It will give them all kinds of difficulties and all kinds of problems from driving atherosclerosis to driving problems of inadequate testosterone or excess estrogen from their testosterone. Now, one of the biggest symptoms that men can get from a testosterone problem or an estrogen problem is prostate problems, benign prostatic hypertrophy. Prostate can enlarge, and the man can end up with problems of urination where he feels like he can't empty fully or he can't finish urinating and he's got to go back again. And this often mimics the sympathetic bladder syndrome, which is where the person has excess sympathetic firing and they can't fully empty their bladder. That's a different problem, but it mimics that same problem. Very often men are deficient in zinc. Zinc is the great stabilizer of testosterone and the great stabilizer of the prostate. So you might find men eating zinc supplements or taking zinc lozenges or taking pumpkin seeds or other types of things that are very high in zinc. Zinc is also high in seafood. So you might see people eating oysters or crab or 
or shrimp or lobster or other types of seafood, especially shellfish. There's some problems with shellfish and there are cleaner versus less clean shellfish around the world, but shellfish is not always bad. Sometimes it can be very good and zinc is very useful. Men also need to know that there are several studies that show that if you um, ingest a lot of lectins, if you ingest a lot of plant lectins, that you will rob yourself of zinc and you'll carry that zinc out in your stool. So you may be consuming foods high in zinc, but if you're also consuming foods high in lectins, especially grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, you might find that that's flushing out of your body through your stool. Men will also do very, very well if they have fat-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K2 especially are really important for the brain and for the metabolism and for the stabilizing factors in all these fat-soluble chemicals and cortisols. I like a very clean ketogenic or a very clean carnivore diet for these patients, although there are people who have to get away from animal protein for various reasons, but they're very rare. So you can get healthy on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, but you got to be super careful about lectins. You got to be super careful to get B12. You got to be super careful to balance all your proteins. And you've got to be really careful to not get too many oxalates. And you have to be careful to not unbalance your omega-6 versus 3 ratio if you're going toward a vegetarian or more plant-based lifestyle. It can be done. I don't think that plants are always the problem that they're turned out to be. I think that much of the problems with plants are pesticides, herbicides, GMOs, and hybridized seeds that have been grown over the centuries to be messed up. You know, Vana Nashiva tells us that in India, they had 20,000 varieties of rice and they intentionally grew them in ancient culture to be able to have these different varieties. You know, today we've got two kinds of wheat in the United States and very few kinds of rice and very few kinds of corn and quite messed up varietals. Seed saving and seed sharing and seed hybridization in the natural environment instead of the laboratory is a great way for us to get back to healthier seeds. And there are seed banks and seed exchange systems around the world for people to exchange their seeds and buy and sell seeds that are not GMO. You'll find that you can test for these male hormones in the blood, the medical system, the medical doctors will test for blood. They'll test for both total testosterone and estrogen and progesterone and, and these hormones in blood. And they'll also test for free testosterone testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, etc. Because the, you want to look at the total amount that's circulating in the blood bound to proteins, and you want to look at the free amount, which is a very small fraction, maybe 1% of the blood total of most hormones is free. And that's the unbound form or the active form that's able to bind to cell tissues and act as a hormone to act as testosterone. You'll see that that's the main way that the medical doctors and medical professionals will look for things like tumors and things like pathologies and diseases. Whereas a natural practitioner is not necessarily always looking for a tumor. They're looking for a much more subtle imbalance in functional medicine. And so they might use urine or saliva testing, which is quite useful in some cases for figuring out all the different hormones and their metabolism metabolites and the androgens and the DHEA and the sex hormone binding globulin, which you have to test for that one in blood. You won't see sex hormone binding globulin in urine or saliva because it's a protein. It shouldn't wind up in urine or saliva unless there's damage to the kidneys. Now the labs that do this, there's the Dutch laboratory, there's the Great Plains laboratory, which is now Mosaic Lab and Genova and several others that do these labs. And they're very good. I like them quite a bit. There are plastic exposures in the United States and around the world. Really the entire planet is exposed to microplastics. We have to be careful to look at microplastics plastics and try to reduce our exposures to plastics. That comes from clothing, it comes from shoes, it comes from food containers and beverage containers. It's a ubiquitous problem everywhere. Another factor that we have to pay attention to is if you want to control your production of testosterone, you want to be able to have acetyl-CoA. Now this is for my biochemistry geeks out there who are interested in the biochemistry of how we form, you know, testosterone and these other hormones. And they essentially come from acetyl-CoA, which you can make from glucose and uh, amino acids, proteins. You can make it from fats. But the most efficient is from fatty acids. So it's really important to make sure that if you want to support your testosterone, that you're eating fat, not carbs, not carbo loading, not necessarily more protein either, but really more fatty acids. And the vitamins that are really necessary to make that fatty acid pathway happen in order to make acetyl-CoA and have it available to make testosterone is to be able to have B2, B3, and B5. Those are riboflavin and niacin or niacinamide, as well as B5, which is pantothenic acid. The relationship between adrenal cortisol and stress is very important in men, just as it is in women, but it's really important in men to understand that if you've got a lot of stress, you may not have uh, very good testosterone. You might have difficulties where you have a problem of cortisone steel syndrome, where your body is producing so much stress hormone cortisol in your adrenals because of your stress that you're not making much testosterone. And that can happen too. So it's very important to monitor your saliva levels or urine levels of cortisol throughout a, a four or five 
collection scheme. And that means that four different times throughout the day or five different times if you include a nighttime collection that you get a diurnal rhythm or cortisol physiologic rhythm so that you can understand the circadian rhythm or the, the rhythm throughout the day and night of your cortisol. Because if you don't, you'll have problems with your testosterone. So these can be problems with libido, they can be problems with the ability to initiate sex or to complete sex or to be satisfied, the ability to be reproductively successful, the ability to, to have babies. And in today's world, we're dealing with a lot of fertility problems and male sperm count is very, very low around the world and especially in the Western world. So we've got to be able to give ourselves these fatty acids, we've got to get enough protein, and we've got to get the vitamins that I mentioned today and the minerals that I mentioned today to be able to support that. We also have to have boron. Boron is a trace mineral that's used to stabilize estrogen in men as well as women, but in men it acts to stabilize uh, estrogen because men need just a little bit of estrogen. They don't have zero, but they have some. And by the way, I'd like to end on saying that progesterone is converted into testosterone and that men can convert progesterone into testosterone. So there are times that men have been applied progesterone cream when they're particularly deficient in progesterone or testosterone or uh, a DHEA. And also you can take DHEA supplements. In some states they're controlled or, or prescribed, but in many states you can get it over the counter as a supplement. It's usually in three to five milligrams. And again, this is not medical advice. This is just how to understand what's going on in these systems. But there are men who have even taken progesterone cream after concussions because there are some studies that have shown that progesterone can stabilize people after concussions, their brain after concussions. Progesterone is particularly good for the brain in both men and women. So you might consider either oral progesterone supplements or progesterone creams or even wild yam creams, which have some precursor molecules to progesterone. And that's what do I need to know about male hormones?